Thank you all so much for attending. I, I think that as much as I'm happy to be here, I think everyone who's attending and taking the time to watch this presentation, I just want to give you um, a kudos, a uh, pat on your back for taking the initiative on your own to seek the development opportunities you need to get the job. And that's a lot more than what a lot of people are willing to do. And so um, thank you so much for coming here. You should be, um, that's, a, that's a great thing on you. My name is Valerie. Um, I started my career out of university in recruitment. So I actually worked at a, an agency. So typically when you hear the term recruiter, that means that you're working kind of like in, um, you're focusing on finding people for a job and then moving on to the next role, moving on to the next role. And um, oftentimes companies will hire a recruiter to help them find candidates to fill a job. Now what's unique about recruiting is that you we get compensated a little bit more when we find the right candidates. And so the job doesn't end at just finding a good candidate. It's part of that job requires you to call people on the phone, extract information to find where where are these like um what skills people have maybe that's not even on their resume. And then we want to make sure that as a recruiter you're succeeding in the interview. So there's a big coaching element. It's how can we get your resume up to par? How are we going to get you to interview really well so that you get the job? And that coaching element is something I really loved. And I've, um, I've had a lot of success in recruitment, I think because I take the time to, um, to really coach and I, I really love that aspect of recruitment. Um, since then, I've been a coach, um, career coach for about two years. And um, I've done a lot of public speaking and currently I'm now working at a wonderful um, organization called Metro Group of Companies. And I do recruiting directly for two business divisions located in uh, Brampton, Ontario and Toronto, Ontario. So I'm no longer working at an agency. I now do recruiting for two companies directly. If anyone is interested in exploring our opportunities, I provided a link in the chat room. Um, I would just also invite everyone to utilize the chat room. I don't think I can, I can't see the chat room on my screen though, Keisha, for some reason. Um, I'm not sure how I can access, <laughs> how I can see that. Um, if you're having difficulty, I can always um, monitor the chat for you and, um, you know, guide you be, as we go, if it will be easier for you. That would be great. So. No um, Keisha will, um, you know, if anyone has any questions, I would really like to, to um, if you could write them out in the chat room, um, and I will get to your answers um, as much as I can at the end and throughout the presentation. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Today we'll be talking about success planning. I will also show you from the lens of a recruiter how we find candidates for jobs. What's unique about this is that I'm showing you this presentation about how to get jobs from the lens of a recruiter. So I will show you what you can do to stand out and get noticed by a recruiter. Because as anyone who's been applying to jobs knows, to get a job, getting the interview truly is half the battle. And so we really need to make sure that we are staying competitive and we're making sure that our resumes are really standing out. Anything we can do to get noticed. That's what we'll be talking about today. So those rock throughs will be really effective. I'll also touch upon resume tips as well, although I won't do a big deep dive. And then I'll end that off with a Q&A, so question and answer period. I'd like to start with a little poll. Um, and I'm curious to learn a little bit more about who's watching today. If you can um, let me know what field of work you're applying for. <clears throat> okay, I think that's that. So most people, um, most of you in the uh, who've attended so far are in customer service and office administration. Um, a handful of you are in engineering and the financial sector. And then there's a couple in, um, a few of you in manufacturing and sales. Okay, thank you everyone. That helps me, uh, so we'll share results. 
Can you all see that on the screen? Oh, nope, that failed. <laughs> I tried. Um, thank you. All right, so now that I know a little bit more about you, let's talk about how we're going to plan for success. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a huge uh, goal setter. I always reverse engineer. So I start with my end goal and then we work backwards. How are we going to get here? What steps do I need to take? And so it's important to have a plan and we're going to do the same thing today. So I want you guys to think about what your goal is. We just answered that question, right? I want to obtain a career as blank, a customer service rep, um, accountant, a bookkeeper, supervisor for production. Um, maybe if you want to write in the, in the, even in the chat what that role is, I'd be interested in knowing what that is specifically. Um, and I'd like to ask what steps do you, so it's important to remember that applying to jobs is a very competitive process. So we need to ask ourselves, what steps do I need to take to get this job? What's going to, and what's, secondly, what's going to distinguish me from other applicants? So I'm curious with some of you, if you can write in the chat room, what steps do you think that you need to take to get that job? So Serby said his goal is buying and sourcing. Okay, I see that. Thank you. I, sorry, I got access to the chat now. I see sales oh, management. excellent. Perfect. Estimate, estimate, estate planning, trust. Okay, excellent. So, um, perfect. Thank you, uh, Homaira, for, uh, for answering this question. Uh, so, what I asked is, what steps do I need to take to get this job? Um, you know, Homaira mentioned targeting resume and cover letter, networking, um, informational interviews. Excellent. So, there's going to be a number of different steps we can take. Um, these are a few of the, um, the places I'd start. Okay, so we need to apply to jobs and uh, potentially even increase our education or uh, get new credentials. So when you, so applying to jobs, I'll, I'll just break this down. So what this might look like is to get this job, I'm going to need to apply to say 10 jobs a week. That means that I need to look for new jobs daily. To take it a step further, you might wanna enroll in a course. Perhaps you have an architecture degree in another country and you need to get that changed over and, and accredited um, so that it's recognized in Canada. Perhaps you need to take, um, it would be a benefit to you to take a course in building codes in Canada. So there are things that we need to consider, uh, especially if we're um, moving our skills and accreditations and education from one country to another. Um, so this is something to be mindful of. Um, networking. If, you, if there's a job that you really like or a company you really like, start trying to connect with um, the people who, who might be responsible for that hiring and being visible to recruiters, which is what I will talk to you about today as well. Now, one piece of advice that always stuck with me, this was when I was in university and <laughs> this was a number of years ago and my professor in our very first year, he said, at the end of the four years of this program, you are going to graduate along with thousands of people who have the exact same degree as you. So what's going to make you different? What's your superpower? What's going to make you stand out? And so I, er, and that really stuck with me. And ever since then, as a coach, I urge everyone to consider what's going to make you different. Um, do you know another language? Do you know three other languages? Um, do, what education do you have? Are you volunteering? Um, what, what sort of initiatives are you part of? So start thinking of those things. Um, are you putting together a, a sample project, a projects or, um, a portfolio of your work? These are things to really get yourself visible and noticed. So when you're thinking about your goals and the steps you need to take, 
don't forget about those small things because they do play uh, huge dividends in the long run. The next uh, thing I would, um, the next uh, system I would encourage everyone to start doing before you even start applying to jobs is to develop a tracking system. Very easy um, on Excel. You can just create different columns for the company name, the job, a link to a job post, the day that you applied, and any update or notes that you might have. The reason why I encourage developing a tracking system is not only just to keep track of the jobs you're applying for, but to hold yourself accountable. Remember in the last slide, I talked about creating a goal to apply to a certain amount of jobs a week. This tracking system will hold you accountable to that, okay? As many of you probably know, applying to jobs can sometimes and often be a full-time job. It is a lot of work. And the reality is, the more jobs that you apply to, the more likely you are to get an interview. It's a numbers game. So no one is allowed to complain if they don't have an interview, if they only apply to 10 jobs right we need to keep going and this is why i love uh, tracking systems um well i guess i kind of answer this question <laughs> but who's more likely to get the interview the person who applies to one to two jobs a week or the person who applies to five to ten jobs a week okay so if you guys can answer one or two in the chat let me know All right, you got it. Thank you. And uh, I see I see your other comments. A tracking system is a good idea. Um, I have a question here. How many job applications would you suggest per day? You know what? I, everyone has different circumstances. Um, you know, if you are working full time already and you are a single parent, or you're just a, or you're a parent and your kids are in sports and all these things, it's going to be different for everyone. Um, what I will say though is, um, I I would encourage if you can do five to ten. Um, if if you can't do that, that's fine. But challenge yourself to do just a couple more than what you think you can because more often than not you are far more capable than you're giving yourself credit for thank you for asking the question i appreciate that um okay so i'm going to read through a couple comments um bryce asked what if by targeting your applications the job you want that means you're only able to apply to a couple of jobs per week um yeah that's a good question so um I, it's good if you're targeting jobs that you're very interested in. In that case, it does take a little bit more time to apply to certain jobs because you might want to amend your resume slightly for that particular role. However, um, there's also some rules that, you know, if you see there's other positions that are quite similar, I wouldn't worry about amending your resume for those ones. I would just blast out your resume um, just to try to get some more, just to get some more opportunities out there. Um, but I will touch upon that a little bit more later. That's a good question, Bryce. Okay, moving on. So now that we have our goal, I want you all to stop focusing on the goal, <laughs> okay? We all know, we already determined you wanna be an accountant, you'd like to be a bookkeeper, you'd like to be a customer service rep, we're not focusing on that anymore. What we're focusing on now is the process. What we're focusing on now is applying to this many jobs a week. We're applying to five, 10 jobs a week. We're going to amend our resume slightly. We're going to focus on getting our accreditations transferred over to Canada. We're going to focus on getting our intermediate level French. Whatever that means to you, just focus on your process. And the reason why, and this is all about the mental game here, guys, is you, we can't be focusing on rejections um, because that's inevitable. Job applications are, are challenging. You're not going to get every job, okay? So if you keep that in mind, just keep focusing forward. 
Anytime you're frustrated, apply to more jobs. Anytime you're angry at your current work situation, apply to more jobs. <laughs> Anytime you're just having a lot of energy, just to keep applying. It trusts the process. I promise you it will be fruitful if you just keep doing that. Now, um, let's do a walkthrough, shall we? Um, so how recruiters and companies identify candidates. I am someone who is a talent acquisition uh, lead and um, there's two different ways that I typically go about finding candidates which is the same across the board okay so we post jobs on um, an applicant tracking system maybe that's um, um, a, a different type of job board so it could be uh, the jobs could be posted on indeed on LinkedIn on monster.ca and then another way is that we actually will go on to um, these same boards and we will search for you and I'll show you how we do that Now um, Can you guys let me know? I'm curious. Has anyone ever been contacted by a recruiter before? Let me know in the chat Okay, yes LinkedIn lots of you Okay, some of you are saying it's a couple a couple knows okay <laughs> Um, all too few times. Okay, so um, so you all know how uh, that that it's possible to be contacted by recruiters. Um, if you haven't, I will make sure that you do. And the next slides. Okay, so let's jump into this walkthrough. Oops. I think you can all share see my screen still. Okay, it's so, not in slideshow mode anymore. Uh, that's okay. I didn't want to okay. be in slideshow mode anymore. Can you? Um, okay. still see, no, you problem. can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're on my uh, desktop, as if I was going to do a recruit, and um, I'm going to look for a customer service advisor, which is great because it looks like a lot of you are looking for jobs in customer service. So the first step I'm taking is I'm going to um, actually look at the job description. I've already spoke to the manager. I know that what I'm looking for. I'm sorry, Valerie. Um, we can't see your desktop view if you're trying to show it. Some people were just mentioning in the chat. Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Thanks for letting me know. Can you no see problem. my screen now? It should say customer service representative. Yes, we see it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So I've spoken to the hiring manager. I've qualified the position. I have a sense of what I'm looking for, but now I'm gonna look at the job description, okay? And um, just an FYI, in case anyone's looking for jobs, this is a real live job posting that I just posted yesterday. <laughs> um, so if anyone wants to apply after, you're more than welcome to. Um, now, I'm going to, so I want you to, when I'm looking at the job description, I'm going to start looking for keywords that we're looking for. So what you'll notice is that I'm looking for someone who has answered a multi-line telephone system, someone who's answering emails, someone who has experience, um, I'll put up a different, I think I just added to this one, someone who's, um, who's answered high, vo who's worked in a high volume call center. Can you guys see this? High yes. volume call center, okay. Um, customer call center. So I'm going to start kind of like highlighting these keywords. Um, I'd like someone, we need, he, this person needs to have experience in Excel. And I know this because I spoke to the hiring manager and they told me they want someone who can speak, who can, who's good at using Excel. Um, I want someone with excellent customer service skills. Those are the main things I'm looking for. Um, if someone has worked with service before, um, you know, that's, I, that's good. It's not the, it's not the uh, end of the world if they don't have that experience. Okay, so these are my keywords. I'm looking for customer service rep who has calls, customer call center experience, who's answered high volume of calls, who answers emails, who can use Excel. So if I'm using Indeed, let's see here. This is my Indeed account, and I will show you what I'll do to find candidates. And just so you guys know and get a sense of like what, what the applicant process looks like, 
Um, I posted this role yesterday. Yesterday? Yep. No, two days ago. And this role has 153 applicants. That's a bit of, that's a bit um a lot to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, you know, but for other roles, you know, I've seen um, you know, an installation coordinator scheduler 30. Sometimes for anything for customer service usually gets um over 100 pretty fast. So that's why it's really important this is to set yourself apart. Okay, so we're going to find resumes. So now remember, I'm looking for customer service rep who has experience with answering and calls, answering call, and maybe multi-line. And I'm going to see what pops up when um, when when I uh, look at that look for these keywords. Okay, maybe I'll look for the word service because that would be be an ideal candidate. And you can see what I'm actually doing, everyone who's watching, is you can see that I'm filtering candidates um, by using more and more keywords. So I'm going to choose Brampton because this is where this job is located. Um, I'm now going to kind of lower the distance because I really don't think people are going to want to travel over 30 kilometers. Um, you know, that's just an example, okay? Maybe I want to find people who've updated their resume in the last three months. So you can see now that I've now um, filtered my search to get resumes of candidates who have this experience I'm looking for. But as you can see, this is still a high number of applicants. So I might write manufacture, maybe I'll write like manufacturing or you know, some, other, some other terms. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start reaching out to these individuals. I'm going to email them and I'm going to say, hi, I think you'd be a good fit for this role. And then I'm going to, I'm going to ask them if they can, if they're interested. And then I'll click that email button. And then I'll send an email to you to let you know that I'm interested um, in talking to you. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back to our present. So actually, I'll do the same thing for LinkedIn. If I'm looking for customer service, I'm going to use a high volume um, call center answering. I'm literally using keywords that were in the job uh, that were in the job description. And I'm going to see what people pop up. So I'm looking for people. And this is what I'll do to find um, individuals using LinkedIn. So this isn't going to work very well for me right now because I didn't make um, a recruiter account. I just made a regular account for um, um just I just made a regular account for the purpose of showing you all today what it would look like from your end. But this is what I would also do on LinkedIn. Okay, anyone have, actually, before I ask for questions, um, I'm just going to go back to this presentation now and go now to the summary of qualifications. Okay, so the observations that you guys might have now, so I just want to ask you all, what do you think, based on what I showed you, that you need to do in your resume to be noticed, based on what I just showed you there? What changes do you need to do to your resume to make sure that you get noticed? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay, number of you are answering. That's fantastic. So keywords, keywords, keywords. Um, I for some reason I always get asked about tricking the ATS system. How do I get past the ATS system? I'm going to be honest. I don't entirely know what. There's no trick. It's just using keywords. Um, now, someone asked how often do you need to update your resume? Um, you know, I would just use a standard resume for the jobs that you're looking for on Indeed because it would be very tedious to update it for every job. But when you are applying to a job you really like, you should definitely update your resume to the specific keywords as much as possible. Okay, so let's move on to this uh, slide. Um, 
Now about summary of qualifications. So who has, um, actually, so a number of you may have a summary of skills or summary of qualifications in your resume. If you don't, I recommend that you do. And the reason why is because if you guys, if you remember, I just showed you a job posting that I had about 136 applicants and I only posted it two days ago. As a, a recruiter, I'm not spending five minutes, two minutes even, reviewing a resume. I'm sifting through the resumes quickly and I'm going to look for what pops out to me right away. So if all your education's all at the top and all the job experience is at the bottom, that needs to be rearranged, okay? You need to make sure your resume is standing out at the first glance. And um, I, I ask the question, are you changing your resume slightly when you apply to jobs? This is going to be unique to you and your experience. And I, and I ask that you try your best to use numbers and quantify your achievements as much as possible. This is a little trick, but it's a smart move to bold keywords to make them stand out. Okay, so I'm going to use an example. Let's pretend that I have a job description for an accountant. I'm looking for a, a person with a licensed certif oh, CPA. Um, Sort of, I think that's sort of, gosh, I don't want to say it wrong, so I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, you must have five years experience working with a revenue of over three million per, per, per year. Okay, so in this example below, this is my summary of qualifications. You can see that this person has clearly looked at this job description and they took, they, um, they applied these keywords licensed cpa so they sh i would have changed this to licensed cpa with seven plus years of experience and firms earning over four million a year okay so it's very clear it's it's there's numbers there written if you are working in construction um you're working in project management you can say i've worked with projects exceeding um a billion dollars um, you know, high-rise building construction of over 5 million. Quantify things. I've received a um, positive score of over 95% um, success rate. So try to use numbers as much as possible. Um, it really drives home um, your experience. Okay. Now, um, remember that job posting that I, um, I showed you as an example. If you wanted, you could change your summary of qualification so it looks like this. Okay, so customer service rep with eight plus years of experience. I think I'm actually going to show you a different one. I just up. You can see my screen. I made a I made a sample resume, and I changed the summary of qualifications as if I was responding to my own job posting. So I said customer service rep um, with eight plus years of experience in high volume call centers answering multi-line phone system, up to 70 calls per day. I think you guys can get the, you can get the gist of it now of how we're really making our resume stand out. As you can see, I put this on the top, my headers are nicely separated and my education's at the bottom. Um, it doesn't need to be at the top because I have, you know, over 10 years of experience in customer service. Why would I put my education at the top? makes no sense. You're just wasting space. <laughs> so um, I hope that's, that answers some questions. Um, I'm going to review some, uh, some of the questions now. What do we have here? Oops. What if your work experience is more than qualitative? Um, you know what? I am positive you will find something that is, um, you know, even even if it's not like your, um, you know, 99% positive customer survey rank, you can say um, five plus years of experience working as a bookkeeper, um, you know, four plus years experience public speaking. So you can quantify your time as well or, or how many number of calls that you pick up or emails that you have to answer.
Okay, I know some people, I see some comments about your resume. I'll answer that after. Um, and we'll move on to the next, um, next piece. Okay, so effective use of job boards. Now, we want to be seen by recruiters. Um, I'm going to, um, if you guys can just comment in the chat, if you're using, is anyone using LinkedIn or who's, who's not using LinkedIn? I'm curious, just see if you can say using or not using. Okay, a lot of people are using. Okay, now I'll stop you guys there. Who's using, um, if you're using Indeed, can you say yes or no? Okay, a lot of you are using both, which is good. Um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of using uh, LinkedIn and Indeed. Okay, so let's get to it. I'm going to share my screen. Oops. How do I get to, um, oh, sorry. I think this is my regular screen. Can you see me moving around <laughs> between different screens? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so on your LinkedIn, this is what it's going to look like. You want to have, regardless of whether you're looking for jobs or not, you should have a little bit of a heading, um, a little bit of a, I guess, a note here of what you're, uh, what you're specialized in. You don't really need to write that you're seeking opportunities or that you're unemployed. Just write the way your specialties are, okay? Make sure you have a clear photo. Your photo should make you look like you are professional and that you are approachable, okay? Professional and approachable. That's what we want. Um, let me move that save photo. Okay, so I have also done my best to update my update my bio and update my experience. And you can also add like a nice little header here um, so that it stands out. Okay, so next, what you guys should do if you are looking for jobs is um, you are going to. Oh, sorry. Let's see here. Oh, you're gonna click open to right here, finding new jobs, because I'm looking for a job. I'm not working right now. So I'm looking for jobs that are, let's say I'm looking for jobs that are on site, hybrid or remote. And I'm looking for jobs as a bookkeeper, looking for jobs as an accounting clerk. And those are the types of jobs I'm looking to. I'm looking for work in Toronto, Ontario, and I'm available to start immediately. Okay, now I also want to let people and recruiters know that I'm actively, that I'm open to work. If you're currently employed, you can choose to have it recruiters only so that only recruiters can see that you're looking for work. But I'm okay with telling everyone that I'm actively looking for work because I'm not working right now. There we go. So as you can see now, my, ha my, um, my photo has this little frame open to work on it. All right, so we see this little briefcase here. This is what we're going to do when we're looking for jobs. So you are going to use a search engine to look for jobs. So I'm going to say I'm looking for as an accountant clerk accounting clerk, say Brampton, Ontario. And I again, same idea that I was doing before. You can put in keywords. So say I wanna work in the manufacturing world because I just, I just like that industry, okay? So maybe I'll look for jobs um, that, are in account, that are in accounting in a manufacturing environment. Um, perhaps I want the job to be entry level and that filters it down to about 24 different results. As you can see here, this is, you can set an alert so that in the future, if I wanna have emails of jobs sent to me or just be notified if there's another job as an accounting clerk pop up, I can set that alert so that it notifies me. You can also save jobs. You know, you read the job description, you like it, you don't have time to apply right now, you can save it for later. Okay, 
If you want to access where to find your jobs in the future, you just click on that briefcase again right at the top and you can click My Jobs. And then you have all your saved jobs right over there for you. Okay, that is how you locate jobs on LinkedIn. It's actually a really excellent tool if you are applying to jobs. Now, I'm going to show you guys something kind of neat. Um, let's, um, let me give you a quick example here. So now I'm going to use Indeed as a job seeker. Um, and uh, I'll show you, this is kind of what it, oopsie. So as a job seeker, Okay, so I'm going to look for a job as a CNC operator in a plastic manufacturing company because that's what I do. My, that's what I specialize in, that's what I'm good at. Okay, so I'm going to apply to the Peely company. <laughs> um, and this is actually this is not many job postings here let's see what else do we got here cnc operator um manufacturing all right so let's say that i'm going to, i want to apply to um this job exm manufacturing i think it's a good job right um let's say i also want to set up alerts in indeed for cnc machine operators Sometimes there's like a little like um, box that shows up right over here. Sometimes it's covered. You just need to push that like X and then you can sign up for job alerts and get them sent to your email. Okay, so you just click send me new jobs. All right, so let's say that I apply to this job, XM Manufacturing. Let's say that I'm really interested in this job. I think it's perfect, it's an evening shift. I'm perfect for this job. So if you wanna take things to the next level and you really wanna get noticed, you can go to Indeed, you can put it in the name of the company. Oops. Put in the name of the company and you can actually look for um, maybe a supervisor, put in the word supervisor. Oh, looks like you guys, if you don't have a premium account, you don't have a lot of functionality. So I would just Google it. <laughs> so google.com, um, this is in Mississauga, Mississauga supervisor. You can just look up people who work there. So put in the name of the company, put in the city, supervisor, um, see what pops up, okay? So I might find this person. Um, let's say I wanna look for the talent acquisition, who the person who's responsible for recruiting on that role. Um, you know, I might just pull up anyone who works there really. And what I might do is just send a message to this person, you know, and, and say, hi, I just, oh, this is a production supervisor. Perfect. <laughs> so this is someone, Rodrigo, is the person that I would want, who would be my direct report for this role. He's the production supervisor. So if it's possible, I'll send him a message and say, hi, Rodrigo, um, I'm really interested in this role. I just applied to it. Um, you know, attached is my resume. Um, if you can forward this information to the person person responsible for hiring, I'd really appreciate it. And that's that. Um, I work. I'll use an example uh, in my current workplace. I um, I work at a small company, and there's been a number of times that I've had resumes literally handed to me on my desk because people found someone in the company to pass along their resume to me. And so if you're applying, especially to a smaller company, smaller manufacturing or something like that, you have nothing to lose by contacting someone um, on Indeed or even phoning in if possible.
um, if you are bold, if you are that bold person, um, you have nothing to lose, really. The most important thing, though, is just to, um, to be politely persistent, but don't overdo it. Does anyone have, okay, so I guess the, what the mo one important thing though I wanna show you on Indeed though is um, you need to make sure your resume is updated. So you need to go to my, your profile and on Indeed, add a resume. So you're gonna click your little person right over here on the top right. You're going to add a resume and then you wanna set it so that it's public. When you do this, I'm a, as a recruiter, I'm now able to use your resume to find keywords so I can contact you for a job. And if you guys know, will notice, I, I just added this resume <laughs> um, a few days ago and I had already like, let's see. Oh, these are from before. Yeah, I had someone reach out to me on Monday already asking me about a job. So this is what it looks like. People will just start reaching out to you, <laughs> um, asking you if you're interested in having a chat. If anyone wants to take a photo of this screen, feel free. These are the items that look kind of like a little checklist that I'd like everyone to consider. And this is important. If you really like a job and you want to be bold and you want to get noticed, this job is perfect for you. It's the exact same feel that you're in. Call the company, find someone who works there, just get in touch with someone. Okay, let's answer some questions here. Um, um, I saw someone mentioned about, uh, asked a question on their resume about um, putting your education on top. There's no right or wrong way to do your resume. Um, I'm showing you from the lens of a recruiter that if you want your resume to pop, put the good stuff at the top, especially if you have a lot of experience already, your education doesn't need to be right at the top. Okay, next slide. Okay, so once again, quick recap on LinkedIn to set up your job alerts. You're going to make, when you're putting in um, the, the keywords of the job that you might wanna apply for. So say I wanna work in the dental industry as a secretary in Toronto, I'm going to make sure I get that alert on. Creating a job alert on Indeed, you're going to, um, I already illustrated that to you. Okay, um, now, does, and I'm going to move into a little bit of some, actually just a quick recap of resumes and then we're going to go to a Q and A. All right, so on your resume, um, I already touched upon this mostly. Um, we want our resume to stand out. This is not going to be a resume um, full walkthrough, but just a brief note, every resume is going to be different. Your headings don't need to be the same as everyone else's, uh, especially because a lot of everyone has different fields. So you might have a section where you have project information. You might have a section for technical skills, especially if you're in a more technical trade. Um, but I'd urge everyone to have some sort of summary of qualifications at the top. So as you can see, name stands out, very organized. My LinkedIn is attached. If I'm someone who has a portfolio, I might actually have a link to my portfolio there as well. And as you can see, it's very organized, it's easy to read. It's really clear in the margins on the right side what my dates of employment were. And I've carried that down to the whole resume, even my training and certifications. Oops, that's wrong, that should be, that should be, um, that should be moved over here. <laughs> so um, you can see that I've carried that down all the way throughout my whole resume, including my education, okay? Um, job title, it's, certain things are bolded. And I think what's so good to have on a resume, everyone, is to have your accomplishments really clearly outlined under your experience, just like so, accomplishments. Maybe you got promoted within six months of employment. That's an accomplishment. Maybe you were, um, maybe maybe you achieved a, you know, a, a very high score on a customer report. Okay, so the, um, and remember, 
your summary of qualifications to really make that stand out and to amend it slightly for the jobs you're applying to. Okay, um, the last thing I want to mention, um, I'm just going to share my screen again, is um, as a recruiter, this is I've experienced this many times where I've spoken to people on the phone and they say, oh, I have this experience back home, but it's not on my resume. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why wouldn't you include that on your resume? So um, I know a number of you watching are, um, are watching from another country or you've immigrated to Canada. And I just want to let you know to please include that on your resume. And I wanna remind you that your experience matters and your experience back home is real experience. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't go away. It's given you the skills to be the person you are today, and you are um, more than able and capable to do the same things. So please don't listen to anyone if they tell you otherwise. There might be a little bit of a transition with needing to get you know, new training, accreditations, just a bit of an upgrade in, uh, in courses so that you have some um, knowledge of maybe building codes or um, you know, the metric system or something like that. But Otherwise, um, I just want you to know that, um, to please include that on your resume. And I'm going to end this here. Quick reminder, job seeking is hard. <laughs> Expect it, keep going, focus on the process, be consistent. And remember, it's a numbers game. The more jobs you apply for, the more likely you are to get, your, um, to get an interview. And hey, you know what? If you get an interview to a job that you're not crazy about, um, do it anyway for practice you know getting practice in front of people in an interview is is good practice so take advantage of it i'm going to bring this over to q a thank you everyone for being um engaged in this process uh all right so let's uh, check out these uh, interview questions. Um, Keisha, if, was there, there any that stood out? To, sorry, let's see. Okay, not too many. Internal, you want me to read them? Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, actually. Okay, no problem. So um, we have somebody that's asking, internal recruiter versus external recruiter. My experience with an internal recruiter is always better. Do you think this is true? No, um, but there's no right answer to this. Um, mm -hmm. Internal recruiter is great because you know that the job might be permanent right away. Um, but my experience, um, I actually got my current job through an agency. And what I love about going through agencies is that um, if someone likes you, they're going to go to bat for you. So they're going to be that person telling a client, a manager directly, hey, I have this amazing person um, named um, you know, named, um, you know, McCall, and uh, he or she is an amazing person for this role for this, this and this and this reason. And then they might go to other clients and say the exact same thing. And they're going to push you through, they're going to even tell you um, what the interview process is like, what to expect. They might have had previous people interview there. So they know what types of questions they get asked. So um, I think there's a lot of benefit to going through an agency. In fact, I find a lot of people actually ask me right away when I call them if I'm an agency or internal recruiter or, and um, yeah, I, I think there's, I think you should answer all calls very positively because those individuals could really help you. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect, thank you. So the next question uh, comes from McCall. So he would like to know how important is it to fill out the online application form? So manually ed uh, entering your education experiences and skills, even after you have attached your resume or cover letter. Does the system automatically filter you out if this information is not filled in? These mm -hmm. application forms tend to take a lot of time to fill in and have the exact same info on the resume that's already attached. Right. Um, you know what, McCall, I, I would I wish I could answer that honestly, but I don't have the answer to that question. When I was applying to jobs two years ago, um, I experienced the same thing and I personally manually copy and pasted every single time. But because I don't want to answer incorrectly, I don't want to answer that one. So you'll have to do a little bit more research. Thank you. So Tamir would like to know if I'm a living a bit far from Toronto and most vacancies are in Toronto, I am 100% willing to move. 
do you suggest that I put my location as Toronto so I'm not filtered out? That's a strategy, yes. Um, you don't have to, it's up to you. But if you live just outside of Toronto, I don't see why you wouldn't be considered for it anyway. Um, but if you are finding that you're not really getting a lot of um, calls or interest, then I would say just to change your, to sometimes we have to pivot, right? If something is not working, we have to ask ourselves, okay, what am I doing differently? Maybe I'm applying to jobs that are too far. Maybe I need to change my, my location. Maybe you need, make sure you change it on Indeed as, the, as well. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a great question. Perfect. Um, Kanta would like to know, what am I doing wrong if I'm getting a lot of interviews but no callbacks? Mm. Um, I mean, that could be a lot of different, um, that could be a lot of different things. Um, so if you're getting a lot of interviews but not a lot of callbacks, I think a good, pro a good question to ask at the end of a call, whether it's a phone call or um, an actual interview is, when do you think I can hear back from you? And that gives you permission to follow up as well. Um, you could even ask if, if there's any time you're ever getting rejected, if you are, if you're bold, feel free to ask. If you don't mind me ask, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, if you don't mind, I'm always looking for opportunities for improvement. Um, can you tell me what I can improve upon? You can ask that question. Um, but I'm a big fan of coaching. Um, I think you guys all know that. So, uh, I, I suggest speaking with someone or finding, using access employment, going with um, other organizations that might offer mock interviews and really practicing with someone um, so that you can really um, enhance your interview skills. And truthfully, anyone can enhance their interview skills. So good question. Thank you. Thanks, Valerie. So I just want to let everybody know that we are coming towards the end. Um, we will have to wrap up at 12. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to get through all of the questions. They are great questions, but if you do um, not have your question answered today, you can always feel free to email me and I can always forward them over to Valerie if needed. Um, well, add me on so LinkedIn. <laughs> if anyone has questions, add me on LinkedIn. Um, it's on this screen right here, linkedin.com slash IN slash Vibrifa. And Perfect. I'm happy to Thank you in. so much. So I'll just go through maybe one or two and then we can wrap up. Um, so I have eight years of IT sales experience in Canada. I maintain my LinkedIn account only. Do you think my Indeed profile is important for this profession? Um, yeah, that's a good question. That's some some positions. A lot of the, a lot of organizations are now using LinkedIn. I would say manufacturing um, usually always post on Indeed, um, but uh, I would say that you should create an Indeed account and just upload your resume so that you can let recruiters find you. Because it Perfect. never hurts to have people find you, right? <laughs> Um, also, so as a new immigrant with experience, but no Canadian experience, should I highlight the experience location in my CV or would that limit my chances for an interview? No, I think it's, it's, it's going to be, I think you should, um, I, I think you should put it in there, but I don't know. I mean, if you, if you feel like, again, if there's no right or wrong answer to this, if you don't feel like you want to share that, or you feel like it's, if you're not comfortable then, then you can remove it. But I am telling you, you don't need to, and no one needs to feel ashamed or nervous or embarrassed or, or that they're going to be limited by your, you should not have that mentality in your head. You are capable. You are, um, you are, you are skilled. You're a skilled, competent person. And it does not matter that your experience is from another country. And I, um, I feel very strongly about that. So, um, thank you for that question. Thank you, Valerie.